sir we are live uh, can we start sir ha uh. okay uh, so good evening doctor sai shuman on behalf of shield healthcare welcoming you all in uh, today's session with uh, dr ognanchu vattacharya sir uh, on the management of uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome so before moving into the session let's have a look on our shield connect page which is a knowledge sharing platform of uh, shield healthcare this is the blog section you can find many blogs written by many eminent doctors across india in our platform and these are the past webinars already we have conducted in uh, many topics uh, and uh, many things has been covered in the uh, this uh, webinars and uh, these are the pcos awareness uh, blog here we can find uh, many talks related to the pcos only and it is available in many regional languages you can see tamil telugu kannad malayalam and uh, many more and these are the covid 19 update page uh, here you can find all the related articles related to the covid 19 which is very pertinent to this uh, time recent times and uh, this is the most important thing and uh, currently Uh, more than 500 doctors are currently supporting us this uh, knowledge sharing platform that is shield connect so i request all the participants uh, please have a look on this website as it's a very important and informative in terms of our subject area and uh, now it's time to start the session with sir and it's my honor to introduce sir sir did his uh, mbbs from medical college kolkata in 1983 uh, completed his dgo in 1986 and md in gyne- uh, gynecology and obstetrics in 1988 from calcutta university kolkata So he is the consultant gynecologist uh, and has a uh, practice of more than thirty uh, four years. And as he is working as a gynecologist in uh, West Bengal Health Service for last twenty nine years, and he is presently attached to Murshidabad Medical College as uh, MO, that is medical officer. And as he has also worked in ICMR project for prevention of preterm labor with uh, Professor Leten in Roy Choudhury in uh, Roy Choudhury sir in nineteen eighty four. So with this short introduction, I request sir to take over the session. and meanwhile i request all the participants uh, for their active participation and please post your queries uh, related to the pcos uh, and uh, its management uh, on the dashboard of the shield connected so once the talk uh, will be over uh, we shall have a short discussion on this topic with sir so thank you very much sir and uh, over to you sir okay uh, should i start yes sir you can uh, welcome to all my colleagues We are hearing our uh, today's discussion is management of PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. PCOS is not merely a reproductive disorder, but an endocrinological disorder It's affecting women in their reproductive years. Although hyperandrogenism and infertility that PCOS causes are distressing to young women, its metabolic tick sequelae eventually. Like the individual in terms of morbidity and mortality. You know, if we uh, just a knowledge about the background or history, it was first discovered by Stein and Leventhal in 1935, and designated as PCO. PCO first they designated as it is a syndrome. Actually, in our student life, there was an operation. of wage resections of the ovary which the name in the name of stein and leventhal this operation was called stein leventhal operation in 1980 the ultrasound criteria for the pcos was added and in 2003 the rotterdam consensus conference also recognized this pcos and in, uh, in two, uh, 218 international evidence based guidelines for the assessment and management of the polycystic ovary syndrome was started disrupted hpo axis it is actually a disease of hpo axis hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis it leads women pcos had hyperinsulinemia hyperandrogenemia dyslipidemia disturbed gut microbiota obesity and inflammation so polycystic ovary is defined by, by uh, in ultrasound if it is more than 12 12 or more follicles each of 20 or 25 or more in a newer newer 
sophisticated ultrasound machine which measuring 2 to 9 mm in diameter on an ovary which has got no cyst but which is greater than 10 mm or a single ovary a single ovary meeting either or both is called a polycystic ovary but its clinical features actually is gynecological, it is irregular menses and infertility. In metabolic, it is insulin resistance, obesity, increased chance of diabetes mellitus, and acanthosis nigricans, and androgenic is alopecia, hirsutism, acne, etc. etc. Now, criteria for diagnosis of PCOS is by uh, hyperandrogenism, clinical hyperandrogenism, or biochemical androgenism. It may be present by Rotterdam criteria, oligoanovulation, it may be present, and polycystic appearance of the ovary, it may be present. But according to NIH, the hyperandrogenism, clinical or biochemical, should be present. Oligoanovulation uh, should be present, but polycystic appearance of the ovaries may be present or may not be present. Androgen and androgen excess society. It uh, says that hyperandrogenism, clinical hyperandrogenism, it should be present along with one or two of the remaining criteria. Either it is associated with oligo and ovulation or it is associated with polycystic ovary. Then it is called, these are the diagnostic criteria for PCOS. PCOS up to 1990, US NIH criteria was two types. Phenotype A, phenotype B, hyperandrogenism and hirsutism present in both phenotype. Oligoovulation is present in both phenotype A and B, polycystic ovary is present in phenotype A, but in phenotype B, it is absent. In 2006, a PCOS criteria added one, one another phenotype where only hyperandrogenism and hirsutism and polycystic ovary were present, but all the ovulatory dysfunction may be absent. And in phenotype T, there may be no features of hyperandrogenism or hirsutism, but oligo the ovulatory dysfunction, irregular ovulation, and polycystic, ov polycystic ovarian morphology should be present. So the main pathophysiology is that insulin resistance. Ins insulin, what insulin does? Insulin actually prevent FSH. FSH to act on the ovary so that LH act, act vigorously on ovary and it produces hyperandrogen, dehydropyandrosterone sulfate, uh, and uh, it causes uh, an uh, abnormal GNRA secretion, causes LH and FSH. LH also acts on the liver to produce. For, for its insulin activity. Now, uh, development of insulin resistance. If insulin resistance develops, what happens? Insulin is primarily responsible for controlling of the LH. It controls the, and LH controls the androgen level. In insulin mediates androgen production by the thicker cell. Insulin resistance coexists with the PCOD. Women with PCOD have a decreased sensitivity to circulating insulin irrespective of the weight, obesity, uh, if obesity is present, thus suggesting that this ins insulin insensitivity is an intrinsic to PCOS. And ionocetal deficiency. Insulin resistance seems to be driven by the deficiency of myoionocetal and decoreoionocetal. Insulin signaling that is damaged in PCOD, myoinocytal deficiency triggers disrupted insulin signal, signaling. Myoinocytal, when uh, deficiency occurs, then it disrupted the insulin sequences. 
and it leads to insulin dysfunction in the disrupt, uh, disrupts LHFSH pathway and as a result, hyperandrogenism occurs. Now, what are the complications? In complications, actually, we mm, uh, uh, divide it into six categories. One is purely gynecological. Primary infertility reported in 50% of the cases of the PCOS. Secondary infertility reported in 25% of the cases. If, uh, if, if uh, the patient with PCOS conceives by chance, then there is three times higher risk of preeclampsia, three times higher risk of gestational diabetes mellitus, twofold increase in the preterm delivery, twofold increase in the risk of intrauterine growth retardation. For the cardiovascular cases, not obstetrics and <coughs> gynecological, there is a twofold increase in the risk of myocardial infraction and twofold increased risk of hypertension. As a metabolic complication is that five to tenfold increase in the development of the in de risk of developing diabetes mellitus type 2. Ongo increase as there is <coughs> increased androgen, increased risk, there is increased risk of endometrial cancer. And the psychological is that fourfold greater or depressive symptoms high prevalence of anxiety and reduced quality of life. <coughs> so our treatment is to aim <coughs> on four, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> our uh, aim of the treatment sh should be in the four direction. One is that re to restore the natural and spontaneous menstrual cycle. Number two is to reduce the androgen level. Number three is overcoming uh, insulin resistance. And number four is improved oocyte maturation and oocyte quality. As, as we all know, and the physician also know, if there is insulin resistance, it is a type of, it is a type of you know, diabetes, uh, type two diabetes. So uh, first, our aim is lifestyle modification. It is the first line of treatment. If if I, lifestyle modification can be done vigorously, PCOS improves lots. In obese patient, weight loss, changes in the diet and physical activity is always recommended. Weight loss decreases the serum insulin, androgen level, reduces the risk of glucose intolerance and type 2 diabetes. And pharmacological intervention in the presence of insulin resistance and glucose inter intolerance and this epidemia that persists after life, mm, lifestyle modification, then it requires pharmacological intervention. More, uh, weight management, modest weight loss, maintenance of the weight loss, prevention of the weight gain, prevention of excess gestational weight gain is the first line of treatment of women with PCOS during and independent, during and independent of the pregnancy. Behavioral and psychological strategies, strategies tar targeting improved motivation, social support, psychological well-being is very, very important. These can be applied to the clinical management of women with PCOS as different reproductive life stages. How weight management, weight loss tips, what are the tips for losing weight? 70% of the women with PCOS have insulin resistance. When the cell stops recognizing the effect of the hormone insulin. Insulin is necessary, necessary for the blood sugar management and energy storage in the body. High levels of insulin with increased body fat and weight gain is observed in uh, women with PCOS. So actually it is a busier cycle. Uh, the, the, more you, the, the more you gain weight, the more fat is deposited, the more insulin is required, and the more uh, insulin resistance occurs. And when, when the blood sugar is, uh, in case of diabetes, when insulin doses is increases, well, but uh, the, you are taking uh, more carbohydrate than you require, 
then it is obviously turned into fat. And then again, insulin resistance occurs, again, deposition of the fat. So low glycemic diet, what you uh, is very, very important. Eating a low, low carbohydrate diet may reduce the insulin level in women with PCOS and it helps in the weight loss. Here, is, here are the, for the dietitian, there are lots of diet which are given, with, which have a low glycemic index and which have a high glycemic in, index. According to uh, grains, these are the glycemic index, vegetables, asparagus, you know, uh, and fruits, according to fruits, dairy, uh, dairy products, and proteins. The, all the, the stable content, all the glycemic index of various food products. Get plenty of fiber food. High fiber diet may improve weight loss. The Indian ICMR recommends that the daily diet of an adult should contain at least 40 grams of dietary fiber. It is recommended to consume a variety of grain products including whole grains, and to choose at least four to five servings per day of fruits and vegetables. Along with the dietary fibers recommendations, the significance of adequate water intake should be emphasized. Benefits, it helps reduce insulin resistance, body weight, and excess body fat. And it lowers the risk of developing cardiovascular diseases, strokes, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, some specific gastrointestinal disorder. Not only the infertility, if this by weight loss can be done, we will also gain from the cardiovascular side, from the metabolic side, diabetic side, from and also from gastrointestinal side. Benefits of fibers in PCOS. Fibers, high fiber containing food decreases insulin resistance, lowers blood sugar, lowers cholesterol, lowers high blood pressure, improves gut biota, reduces hunger, aims in weight management, minimizes minimize crab craving, prevents constipation, and also it lowers androgen levels. If patient does not wish to conceive, then the medical therapy is directed towards the interruption of this unopposed estrogen on the endometrium. Non-fluctuating level of unopposed estradiol in the absence of progesterone causes irregular uterine bleeding, amenorrhea, infertility, and increased risk of endometrial cancer. OCP elevates the risk of CVD. They cause dyslipidemia and increase the chance of thromboembolic agents. There are evidence suggesting the increased risk of diabetes with OCP uses and this can be dose dependent. So a low dose oral contraceptive pill is always necessary, recommended if at all the OCP it should be given if the patient does not wish to consume. There are a number of new OCP where only 20, uh, 20 milligram of microgram of estrogen is now given how will you manage the hirsutism? Hirsutism is given by, give, by giving spironolactone. There is weak evidence that 25 to 100 milligram twice a day and is triated to balance efficacy while avoiding the side effects such as orthostatic hypotension. A full clinical effect may take six months or more. It can cause, but spironolactone can cause cause and exacerbate hyperkalemia. So, spironolactone should be used very cautiously in patients with renal impairment. Rarely, exposure has resulted in ambiguous genitalia in male patients if spironolactone is given. We are treating symptoms and not the cause. So, hormonal imbalance, what are the hormonal imbalance, hyperandrogenism, and LHFSH imbalance? And meta what is metabolic imbalance? It is insulin resistance and it is dyslipidemia. So, 
hyper androgenism causes oligo oligo or amenorrhea and ovulation uh, lh it's it causes um, insulin resistance and dyslipidemia uh, causes yeah, um, acne hirsutism uh, virilism acanthosis nigricans impaired glucose tolerance obesity so for insulin current uh, treatment is insulin sensitizers given metformin anti androgen given spironolactone oral pill can be given oral contraceptive pill ovulation induction can be given in pcos if the patient wants wants to conceive for cosmetic reasons lower hair removal bariatric surgery acne therapy and other are lodians metformin is recommended in presence of metabolic features if bmi is 25 kg 25 or more kg per meter square insulin sensitizing agent increased but low ovulation frequency lowers the conception rate per ovulation than all other methods if bmi is greater than 30 consider metformin in combination with clomiphenicillin metformin uh, if metformin alone is given it does not improve any ovulation increased ovulation for by lowering the weight but per uh, conception rate per ovulation does not increase but if we add clomiphen citrate along with along with metformin it may improve the response of the rate of clomiphen citrate and the debatable reduction in is also found in metformin for androgenic symptoms no satisfactory treatment regime the good insulin sensitive sensitizer if we met a metformin is given it lowers hyperinsulinemia it aids in weight loss but insulin resistance is not seen in all patients with polycystic ovary and gi disturbance is severe in in some patient with having metformin oral contraceptive pills might aid in regularizing the main menstrual cycle clinical evidence does not support this claim and aids in combating the hyperandrogenism it clinically improves the it regularizes the menstrual cycle and patient has got a psychological benefit but it does not restore the ovulation which occurs in case of pcos and the worst is that if oral contraceptive given it leads to weight gain it accentuates dyslipidemia it also worsens the insulin resistance so the increased risk of cvd cardiovascular disease and increased risk of thromboembolic events increases if the patient wants to conceive if ovulation induction given it induces ovulation but the effect on any other aspect of the pcod is is mm, not affect is a, it cannot correct in other other aspects of the pcod so it is not indicated in all pcos patient in ovulation induction induced drug are only indicated if the patient having pcos only wants to conceive and the worst is that it increases the risk of ovarian cancer if only ovulation induction and overstimulation of anti androgen and flutamide anti androgen lowers and hyperandrogenism uh, androgenemia aids in combating hirsutism or virilism but it do not tackle the insulin resistance and do not restore fertility and it is very hepatotoxic so could ionocytes be considered to treat pcod this is a new concept yes myo myo ionocytal it is commonly found in fruits grape fruits is the highest vegetables leafy food, leafy vegetables is the lowest and in all foods containing beans almonds Wal walnuts the highest. Myoinus ionocytal plays an important role in the secondary messenger in the human body in multiple function. Myo ionocytal is present in high concentration in ovarian follicular fluid. Myo ionocytal is essential 
for normal reproduction, reproductive function of the female, high levels of the bioinositol in the follicular fluid is very important for follicular growth and oocyte maturation. And high, high levels of ionocytone ensure a good quality of oocyte. So what is its action, uh, what is the mechanism act of action of the myoionocytal? Myoionocytal corrects the altered LHFSA by regulating the GnRH pulsatile. It improves the insulin sensitivity by acting as a secondary messenger for insulin action in the peripheral tissue. It brings down the plasma levels of insulin. It improves ovulation and uh, oocyte quality by acting as a secondary messenger for FSH. So myoinocetal patient with polycystic ovary, in, it is a novel method for ovulation induction. Ovulation induction with myoinocetal alone and in combination with clomiphene citrate in polycystic ovarian syndrome in patient with insulin resistance, there are lots of uh, different studies in 47 adovulatory PCOS women, ovulation induction occurs in 61.7% cases, whereas they are resistant in only 38% cases. And of the 61% cases, the pregnancy occurs in 23% cases, whereas not pregnant in 38% cases. Uh, duration is um, normal uh, of all the 40, uh, 47% women. If they are normal weight, then ovulation, ovulating with myoanacetal is 32%. If it is overweight, it reduces by 26%. And if it obese, it, uh, it again re reduces by 24%, 44%. Uh, pregnant with myoinocetal is uh, myoinocetal is out of 11, 11, 10, and 18 at the uh, ovulating with myoinocetal, of which are 11, 6 of the 11 women, 3 of the 10 women, and 2 of 8 women were pregnant. Whereas 9 of the non pregnant women with myoinocetal, 9 of the uh, 10 patient and 8 of the 20 patient were not pregnant. So resistance is more common with when there is overweight. Myoinocetal is a safe alternative approach in the treatment of infertile PCOS. A German observational study. This study shows that PCOS patient, the pregnancy rate is uh, Fifteen percent in non myoinocetal cases, and in myoinocetal cases, it increases. So, myoinocetal improves the oocyte quality and maturation. Myoinocetal plays a key role in the nuclear and cytoplasmic oocyte development, and a higher concentration of the myoinocetal in the follicular fluid is a marker of a good quality oocyte. International society says myoinocetals can be evaluated as a primary method of ovulation induction in PCOS. Myoinocetal treatment should be routinely introduced in IVF protocol. So what are the take-home message? Take-home message is that a comprehensive management of a PCOS requires a patient-centered approach, significant time dedicated to thorough education and counseling, remaining up to date of newest advances in the literature, improvement in the health, improvement in health of the PCOS women in pregnancy could help prevent disease in the next generation. If obese, weight loss should be recommended prior to initiation of any therapy. Hyperandrogenism, hyperinsulinemia should be looked for every PCOS patient. Ovulation inducing agent and adjuvant should be customized. PCOS patient is more difficult to treat with IVF. Cycle cancellation rate and risk of OHSAs are higher. Fine tailoring, tailoring 
of the ovarian, ovarian stimulation is necessary to avoid complication. And treating physician should be aware of the difficulties and remedies and solution. So thank you very much for this, for your patient hearing. And now, now I now hand it over the mic to. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for this uh, nice presentation in uh, PCOS. Uh, as we understood, uh, this is a long-term problem and uh, it is associated with many other issues. So just, sir, give me uh, one minute to collect the question from the dashboard, uh, then I will get back to you, sir. Sir, if you allow me, then we can start this. Sir. Huh. Yes. Okay, okay. Sir, the first question is, can only the lifestyle modification can uh, means, uh, reduce the problem of PCOS in terms of uh, obese PCOS patient? Sorry, I cannot follow you. What? Yeah, sir, uh, can only the lifestyle modification in terms of calorie, in terms of diet, that things only uh, in terms of exercise, that only can reduce the problem with uh, PCOS if a uh, lady would not like to take any medicine for that? No, no, no. In all, in all, in all patient, only the lifestyle modification cannot correct the PC waves. You will have to add first, but your first target for first, before starting the treatment, you should concentrate on lifestyle modification. You are treating and the patient is following you, not following your diet, then your all drugs, all your attempt, is, if he is infertile, all your attempt will fail. So first, the patient should be motivated and patient should be counseled that all your problem will be solved if you follow the lifestyle modification. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And sir, uh, another question is, uh, which drug you do, would you like to prefer in uh, terms of ovulation induction? Is it uh, clomiphene citrate or uh, letrozole? Huh? Sorry? Sir, which drug would you uh, like to prefer uh, in case of ovulation induction uh, with the letrozole or clomiphene citrate? Actually, clomiphene, clom uh, clomiphene citrate was uh, used previously. Uh, but what I do, I first try with clomiphene citrate. If it fails, then I shift to letrozole. And here, there is no criteria that this patient will uh, have a success in Letrozole and these patients will have a success in okay, okay, okay. the action of the both of them are almost similar. Okay, sir. And uh, recent one thing I just uh, want to share with you, sir. Uh, many uh, research is uh, coming on uh, with letrozole with some other adjuvants like NSC, uh, NS style cysteine that also increase the ovulation induction. Uh -huh. So thank you very much, sir. And uh, let me check. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, I could not find any other question. Uh, okay. So, if you if you allow me, uh, then we can conclude this session. Okay. So, thank you very much, sir, once again for your valuable time in our uh, knowledge sharing platform, the Digital Connect. And in future, also, I would like to invite you and many other talks. And uh, uh, please accept my our uh, invitation for that. So, thank you very much.